What's up everyone, my name's Cam. I'm a certified dog nutritionist and founder of The Dog Nutritionist. This is my dog food review of Tails Dry Dog Food. I'm also gonna talk a little bit about their other products because I have the information uh, on my notes below me. So, yeah. In this dog food review, we are gonna look at, of course, the ingredients within their dry dog food recipe. I know that they claim to do personalized meal plans for dogs, but the reality is all their recipes are rather similar. You might get differing flavors, different proteins, but the actual breakdown and the quality of ingredients within those recipes are extremely similar. So this review does account for pretty much all of their food. We're gonna start off um, with the dry dog food and then I'll talk about the other products. Just as a bit of a heads up, I do not think you should be feeding this food to your dog on a daily basis. There are major dangers to feeding diets of solely processed food. In human nutrition, we're fully aware of these dangers. We know that processed food is connected to nearly all types of degenerative disease, cancer, kidney issues, liver issues, gut microbiome, dysbiosis, IBD, you know, loss of mobility, I think I mentioned joint issues, everything. The degeneration of health is massively impacted by the quality of the food that you choose to nourish yourself with and that you choose to nourish your dog with. Unfortunately, within veterinary nutrition or pet nutrition, we're not really aware of these dangers. We don't have the data from research studies to point out this very obvious and logical truth, which is why we still have veterinarians selling and recommending processed foods. That is so contrived. If you went into a hospital and there was a fast food chain uh, serving food, that's how illogical it is is. So you must, as a dog owner, to protect your dog long term, implement as many fresh foods within your dog's diet as possible. Yeah, we all hear those stories of dogs who have lived to 15 on dry dog food, but the reality is if those dogs had consumed more fresh food, then they would have lived longer and healthier lives because that is the impact of fresh food nutrition. If you are interested in getting your dog to fresh foods, more fresh foods in their diet that are gonna to work to keep them healthy, I've got so much free information for you. Uh, I made a free dog nutrition course which you can watch on this YouTube channel. It comes with a free dog nutrition guide. I know, you're so super interested, but um, I really would recommend you watch it. Nutrition is how you take control of health. Getting a quality diet, implementing a fresh food, natural diet is gonna to work to keep your dog happy, healthy, and out of the vets longer. And that is ultimately what we all want as dog owners. We just wanna know that what we're doing is the right thing. And so many pet food companies pretend as if that's what they're trying to do for your dog too. And unfortunately, it is not the case. Sorry, a bit of a bit of a yammering on. Um, now we're going to get into the ingredients. I'm going to just look at this pack here. Um, so, for those of you who don't know, ingredients on a dog food go in descending order. That means the first ingredient is the most prevalent, and the last ingredient is the least prevalent. In tails, in this particular bag, which is um, this is advanced nutrition for mature dogs, but it's not. Uh, chicken, 38.5%. Brackets, chicken meal is 23%. Freshly prepared chicken is only 10%. And chicken gravy is 3%. Chicken fat is 2.5%. So... Whilst it says chicken 38%, actually the majority of that is powdered 
chicken. Powdered food is the most highly processed, low quality protein source. It's literally, you can get the worst quality ingredients that humans um, won't eat or is just discarded and you, you cook it down into a powder. What this does is it maintains its protein quantity, but the quality is massively affected. There's also a loss in nearly all uh, water-soluble vitamins, fat-soluble vitamins. The nutrition profile of the food is massively affected and it's just a really substandard ingredient and it is the main protein source within Tails. I think, and if you look at the ingredients on your food, you'll see that powdered meat is the main protein source within uh, your dogs, if you're getting the dry food, that is. Uh, the next ingredient is whole maize. That is extremely worrying. Maize is connected to allergies and intolerances by some holistic veterinarians. Dogs should not be consuming maize on a regular basis. It is so unnatural. It's so hard even for us humans to break down. And that's why it's connected to allergies and intolerances because the gut microbiome and a natural balance determines our dog's sensitivity and strength, immune strength and perceived allergen sensitivity. And if your dog's gut microbiome is not naturally balanced, it's gonna be more sensitive to those things around them. Then rice, 11.5%. So more than 11.5% of the meal is whole maize. It's probably gonna be around 20, around the 20% mark would be my guess. This again is not good. High carb diets for dogs put stress on their digestive system because they're not as evolved. If you've got a dog that needs to lose a bit of weight or, you know, this is for increased joint care to support. I mean, it's not. These maize and rice are inflammatory ingredients. We know the effect of these starchy carbs for dogs suffering from arthritis and that's that it works to increase inflammation and decrease mobility. Beet pulp, they give that to horses. Then you have peas, brewer's yeast. I mean, so they're really, all of this is made up of powdered meat and, and, and some carbs, which is really, really worrying. You then have a few prebiotic supplements added, glucosamine, uh, yucca, you know, it's just, it's not good. Additives. Okay, there's a long list of additives on this food and that gives you an indication of how low quality the ingredients are. If you see a long list of additives on your dog's food, you know that the ingredients aren't as nutritionally sound or they're not fulfilling the requirements set by the FEDIAF. So they're having to add a whole load of synthetic vitamins to this mix just to fulfill the requirements. And that's not good. We don't really know the effect of cooking on these synthetic um, additives. And that, that is worrying, that is worrying. It could be that they are carcinogenic. So now we move to the analytical constituents. Protein, 25%. This, it's neither here nor there because all the moisture has been sucked out of this food, which makes that number a lot higher. Uh, fat 13, fiber three, ash eight. So we've got 11, 24 and a half, 41 and a half. So this is gonna be a, just around 30% carbohydrate, which is far too high for a dog. Um, yeah, just not good. Just not good. 30% carb and it's supposed to be for joint care and it's just going to cause your dog to gain weight and provide low quality protein which isn't going to uh, help create those healthy joint cells which are all made up of proteins it's a it's a very classic pet food marketing i can't be too um negative because i don't want to get sued but it's not i just yeah it's not good. Avoid feeding your dog tails dry food. Uh, I'm now gonna look at some of their other products which I have below me, um, the ingredients. 
They're wet food. Ingredients include 46% meat and animal derivatives, of which 4% is beef, or whatever they label the food as. They only include 4% because that's what they can get away with. It's quite deceptive because you think you're getting beef, but actually meat and animal derivatives can be anything. They can be dead zoo animals. They can be uh, just waste human ingredients that are all chucked in to a big pot cooked up and that's what's in your dog's food and and it's really really substandard then you have vegetables three percent peas three percent carrots i mean neither here nor there fish and fish derivatives not good not good let's have a look at their handmade salmon biscuits ingredients include potatoes Dehydrated salmon, 26%. So potatoes is gonna make up the vast majority of this, this treat. Then you only have powdered fish, which is, 20, which is a quarter of it. And then the rest is glycerin, rapeseed oil, overconsumption of seed oils. Increases the omega-6, omega-3 balance in your dog's diet, making it inflammatory. Prebiotic, salt, carrots, linseed, 1%. I mean, whatever. Uh, the small dental dallies, the ingredients are cereals, meat and animal derivatives, derivatives of vegetable origin. I would never, ever feed my dog this product, ever. Just cereals is the main ingredient and then you're getting random anonymous meats to flavour it and then derivatives of vegetable origin. Interesting, and then a load of additives as well. Just not good. I think that Tails is... Uh, one of the lower quality dog foods. Clearly, it's very well branded, which is why it's been bought by Nestle. Um, it, it gives off the, it's just easy to perceive as being a good, fun, healthy food for your dog, but the reality, it is not. 